Hello students, welcome to EPG Patishala. I am Dr. Sabu Matthew George from uh, uh, CWDS and uh, as an independent researcher. Today we are going to talk on the module mapping the child sex ratio, the first part, under the paper, the stories of the state that the states tell. The objective of this module is to make the student aware of the issue of female feticide and by mapping child sex ratio so as to understand the spatial dimensions of the spread and intensity of the changes in sex ratio over time. We are starting with definitions. What is sex ratio? And uh, globally in India and it is different. So in India, sex ratio is defined as number of females per thousand males and child sex ratio will be the number of females per thousand males in the age group of zero to six years. So we are looking at the census of 2001. We are using census for this entire presentation because census is the only source of data which will cover every habitation, every village, every ward in an urban area. And since census happens only every 10 years, we are looking at the most two recent census, census 2001 and 2011. So in 2001, we saw Punjab and Haryana having very low ratios. Uh, and, uh, and the surrounding areas of Himachal, Uttaranchal, Rajasthan, Gujarat, a little better off, but there again, uh, well below 910. And if you look at Eastern India, or southern India, they're much better off. Looking at the situation between 2001 and 2011, this shows you both the census maps and you see, you know, like a place like Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir have had the sharpest drop in 2011 census. While Punjab and Haryana have improved a little bit, but you have seen very sharp drops in Uttar Pradesh, in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Rajasthan have again at the overall have remained at the same level but you see very significant drops in many districts of Rajasthan while some districts of southern Gujarat have improved. So we are looking at uh, earlier we looked at the st states now we are looking at districts. So we are looking at uh, nearly 600 districts we had about five, uh, yeah, 630 to 640 districts in 2011. So when you look at what you're seeing at the state level, it's aggregate, but at the district level, you will find that even parts of Madhya Pradesh, parts of Uttar Pradesh, you will find deep red drops, which means we are looking at ratios which are uh, between 830 or even much less than that. So when you come down, you will see some improvement in, in Gujarat, very sharp drop in many districts of Raj, uh, Rajasthan as well as in Maharashtra. Okay, now this is India with the child sex ratios uh, in different colors. And uh, as we have indicated before, child sex ratio indicates the extent of discrimination against girls before birth at birth and after birth in the initial years of the life. If there is no discrimination against the girl child, sex ratios can be as high as 980 girls per thousand boys. But large part of India increasingly are falling below 900 and sometimes even below 800. So we are looking at this state of Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh is almost like a continent. It's the most populous state of the country um, and uh, huge in terms of, it starts from the borders of Uttarakhand, Punjab, Haryana and goes all the way to Eastern India, bordering uh, Jharkhand, Bihar. So uh, of more than 80 districts, what we are seeing is in 2001, it was the westernmost districts which were affected. 2011, we see the spread towards central and uh, eastern UP. 
you will find uh, like in Eastern UP, urban centers like Allahabad and Varanasi drop. Now we are looking at Eastern India, a state of West Bengal. Now remember, the we are using different cutoffs in uh, different regions of India because the declines have started at different times. Punjab, Haryana, we have seen declines in 80s and 90s. In Bengal, we are seeing declines more recently. So if you look at this uh, map of West Bengal, 2001 looks really dark green, most of it, except for Calcutta, which is yellow and which remains in yellow in the 2011. So you do find a uh, lot of dark green areas, particularly upper Bengal, Darjeeling area and adjacent areas uh, declining. So now by standards of UP, 950 would look very good in UP, but in a state like of, of Bengal, 950 becomes the average. Now Maharashtra, um, again, if you look at 2001 itself, you've seen so much of red and dark red. The developed areas of Maharashtra are the western areas. And what you are seeing right now is even the backward areas of Maharashtra, like parts of Marathwada, have already had worse child sex ratios. And this is the paradox. That is, sex determination becomes popular not only where in the most developed areas, but also in the underdeveloped areas. So what you are seeing in 2011, that uh, most of Maharashtra, that is, there is a considerable uh, decline even in most parts of eastern Madhi, uh, Maharashtra, which were much better off. So practically uh, what you're seeing is light green and green have all disappeared. Even the coastal regions which were better off have declined. So what we are seeing is almost a change in almost all parts of all districts of Mar Maharashtra. Now we look at the Tamil Nadu, uh, one of the bigger states of South India. Now, eight till 81, the ratios in Tamil Nadu were gone, were good, but in 91, there were some declines. But by 2001, right from the top in Dharmapuri, down all the way down to Thani, it started declining. And 2011, we, we saw some improvements in Salem, uh, in parts of uh, Tamil Nadu. But what we are seeing is an incredible shift in the, towards eastern parts of Tamil Nadu. So this is something which is very disturbing because ratios which were not affected in the last previous in the 80s, 90s or, or 2000 are, have dropped in 2011. And remember, you know, traditionally southern India and eastern India were very much different from northern India. And what we are seeing today, southern India is also, and particularly Tamil Nadu, is showing very, very disturbing trends. Like for instance, in 1991, Salem in central Tamil Nadu was the worst district ever in the, of all the 550 districts or so of the country. Now we are looking at the child sex ratios, uh, imbalances at the sub-district level. We have seen in at the India level first, then we saw at the state level, now we are going towards the sub-state level because the smaller the, the unit you are looking at, the larger the variation. And uh, if you want to see where the district is heading, you need to look at what is happening to the sub-districts. If you want to know where the state is heading, you need to look at the sub-district, I mean at the district level and finally at the country level, if you want to know where the country is heading in the coming years, you need to look at the states in terms of what the kind of heterogeneity it is showing uh, in terms of time, in terms of space. Now we are looking at the sub-districts because districts are too big in many parts of India. So when we look at sub-districts, we see the changes which are happening um, at smaller levels and therefore this is what is disturbing, when you look at 2001, you saw a lot of good areas green, which were much better than 950. Now 
but practically almost all the green have disappeared. Large parts of light green in, in central and eastern UP have all become have becoming much more yellow or red. So, sub-district changes will tell you what will happen in the district in the coming few years. So, what you see is that earlier in 2001, there was relatively, except for the border districts, there was relatively less uh, red in, in uh, towards central or eastern. Now, what that has changed very drastically. Now, when you look at district like Jansi, which is at the edge of uh, UP, virtually projecting Jansi, Lalitpur, etc., projecting into Madhya Pradesh, what we are seeing, so changes we are seeing everywhere. In the Bundelkhand region, which was better off, we are seeing worse off. We are seeing even in Sonbhadra, which was largely a tribal area, have things have become much worse. Up in the border of Nepal, some of the eastern districts were very much better off. Now we are seeing declines there. And of course, central UP, Eastern, I mean, the, the, the better of areas of Allahabad, Varanasi, etc. Now we are seeing very profound changes. Now we are looking at Bengal at the sub-district. Now, at, as you seen before, at the district level, Bengal looks very impressive. But now we, the moment we go to sub-districts, we are seeing, even in upper Bengal, up North Bengal, we are seeing red, you know, which is between 900 and 920 for Bengal. And we are seeing, even in the uh, lower parts, we are seeing changes. So this is something which is very, very disturbing. Though we have large numbers of sub-districts which are ab above 950, 960, we are also seeing more, uh, more allowing, which is 920 to 940, which means about 2 to 3 percent of I mean, between one to two, one to three percent of girls being eliminated. So, and we see contiguous areas. So that is should suggest what we are seeing are real things and not random distribution. So now we are looking at Maharashtra at sub district level. So what first of all what we are seeing is that uh, large parts of eastern Maharashtra have which hardly had any red, have much more red and certainly much more yellow. We are seeing even towards the western part of Maharashtra, we are seeing a large expansion. So the virtually the entire Marathwada, some part of western Maharashtra and large parts of eastern Maharashtra are all becoming very, very, so virtually the whole state has dropped very sharply. One of the sharpest drops in 2011 has been because you have seen changes in most sub-districts of, of uh, Maharashtra. And Maharashtra is important because it's a state between North India and South India, traditionally very politically, very progressive, educationally and culturally also more liberal. And what we're seeing, the, that sex selection has changed tremendously in these areas of more liberal parts of uh, our country. So what we are looking at is now Tamil Nadu at the sub-district level. So what we are seeing practically red in most parts of whether it's upper part of Tamil Nadu or way down, we are seeing even yellow coming in. We have seen a huge amount of uh, less than 920, that is more than 3% of the girls eliminated in, in around Kadalur and around. Uh, so that is something which is very disturbing because traditionally Tamil Nadu ratios were one of the better in South India. But now what we are seeing is that at the sub-district level, we are practically seeing so little green in 2011. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about, talk without maps. You've already seen the regional heterogeneity. You have learned that Northern India was much, was relatively worse off, while Southern, Southern India and Eastern India had good levels traditionally. So, 
what we are now looking at is the impact of the misuse of modern technologies on these traditional differences. So, scholars for decades had explained uh, the differences between North, South and East in terms of cultural and demographic factors. But today one has to look at sex selection, when it started and how it has spread and intensified over time to understand the new patterns of changes. So this again, you know, what we are looking at is that regional differences today are becoming less marked. That is the change what we are seeing in over the last 20 years in between the 90s and 2001 and 2001 to 2011 is that the is not only the worst of areas are be becoming much worse, but we are also seeing that there is greater discrimination at birth in southern India and eastern India which traditionally had better ratios. So when you what we have to understand therefore is that absolute le levels of sex ratios would definitely be different like eastern India Bengal would look very impressive, uh, southern India some parts of uh, uh, even Tamil Nadu or parts of Andhra or Karnataka and large parts of Kerala would have fairly good ratios. But what we have to recognize, we are seeing declines everywhere in the country. Now, it, what is the extent of decline will differ from area to area. Uh, we have seen in Punjab and Haryana because the ratios had dropped very sharply in 2001. We have seen some improvements in, in Punjab and Haryana while we are finding very steep declines in Jammu and Kashmir. We in, when you go to West Bengal, we are seeing at the district level some changes, but at the sub-district level, we are even seeing uh, much sharper declines. So, Western UP, we have, we have to look at levels between 820 to 870 in the more uh, severely affected areas, while in Eastern UP, the better off areas are also dropping. One of the ways to look at the region, the, how the regional differences are changing is to look at the worst 10. The worst 10 in 2001 was in the traditional area of Northwest India, fierce patriarchy, most of the 10 districts were in that region. Now, 2011 will show you an entirely regional pattern of the 10 worst districts. So, you have, you, we see areas like Pithoragad, which is in up on the border of, in, in Uttarakhand, in the bit near the border of Nepal and Tibet. We are seeing Jammu and Samba, you know, in, in Jammu's, region of Jammu and Kashmir. We are seeing in the Marathwada region, one of the most backward areas of Maharashtra and the, the one of the most backward districts of Marathwada beat is has emerged to be among the worst 10. So, uh, this uh, change among the worst 10 districts itself is one way to look, uh, one way which, which reveals the dramatic changes which is happening in the regional demography of our country as far as child sex ratio, sex ratios at birth in the country are concerned. Now we come to the some of the best states, Kerala for instance, which has had for 100 years among the best child sex ratios of the country. We are seeing now declines at the sub-district level. Now remember what we have seen from 90s is that once this decline starts in one area in within a district that's one sub district drops then it spreads much faster so when you see a level, sub district level at 930 in a district which is 950 now a district of 950 in, in kerala may not look that impressive but 
in a district of 950 in up or punjab or haryana would look extremely impressive so when you look at kerala remember that a ratio of 930 at the sub district level is somewhere like looking at 800s or 850s in punjab or haryana so therefore this regional declines at the sub district levels cannot be ignored now all this while we are looking at declining in ratios in child sex ratios remember in the last 40 years we have seen remarkable improvements in malnutrition particularly girl child malnutrition we are seeing improvements in in child mortality infant mortality maternal mortality rates have dropped we are seeing very significant improvements in literacy of women around the country we from the late 80s we have seen women have started living longer than men for instance in kerala women are living 5 years lo longer than men so therefore uh, what is disturbing about sex selection is that this phenomena which reflects extreme form of discrimination against women is becoming worse while almost all the other indicators which are looking at women's status are improving so again let me emphasize so by most indicators of women's development women are doing much better now if you do not deal with this ongoing genocide of sex selection where uh, you know tens of millions of girls were not allowed to be born the intergenerational consequences will last for a very long time and uh, so what when you look at you know 15 million missing girls over the last 20 or 25 years the consequences will be frightening for the next several generations so we are trying to emphasize that effective actions can still be taken and we can see turnaround like we have seen improvements in punjab and haryana we have seen improvements in maharashtra you know if rest of the country can learn from these turnarounds then you know we you know not every district every region will have to reach 800 levels or low 900s before it starts improving now it's important to remember as of today that a large number of children who are going to be counted in 2021 have already been born so therefore it's important to recognize that that uh, though we may not be able to make much changes in the 2021 census but if we start if we don't start taking effective actions so that more girls are going to be born then any subsequent turnaround in the post 2021 time also becomes very unlikely so what we are seeing is in 91 there were large number of districts which didn't seem to have much changes but 2001 more districts got affected and 2011 even more so this you know where satish aknyothi used to use the term epicenter to look at the worst foci from where it spreads from one district to the entire region. You know, scholars like Gilemoto used cold sports and hot sports to look at the extremes. Cold being really good uh, ratios, hot meaning very at the worst areas. And the presumption was that the cold will also spread just like the hot spots are spreading. But quantitative analysis of the 91, 2001, 2011 by uh, scholars have shown that hotspots are indeed spreading, like what you have been seeing in so many of these maps. And not only cold sports are disappearing, as scholar Rajani has concluded, but cold sports doesn't seem to have a positive impact on the neighboring areas. Thus, you know, incre increasing masculinization of child sex ratios of all the of all regions of the country, most districts of the country is what we are seeing. 
step. See, so far I have shown you uh, fixed cutoff maps. Now, I would like to emphasize that, uh, that you know, whatever cutoffs you take, whichever region you take, you will find the same uh, conclusions I have been talking about. I give you a few exercises where you, where you can actually choose variable cutoffs. Fortunately, all this you can do on the website censusgis.org. So, you can pick and choose a district of yours of what you are interested or a state of what you are interested and look at the uh, sub-state or sub-district areas of the of, of your area of choice. Now, you can actually do multiple cutoffs, but I am trying to sh simplify it for your this thing and I am starting with the first exercise. So, I am doing the first exercise comparing the wards of 2001 and 2011 of Calcutta. So, I start with West Bengal state, then I choose Calcutta in the search box. So, I choose for the district of Calcutta. Then I open both the boxes of 2001 and 2011 so that I can see both the maps together. And once I see those two maps, I go to the query and choose the indicator child sex ratio. Then I put in the, the data ranges. I'm Here I am looking at less than 900 and uh, um, I can also repeat it with less than 850. So, you can see the, what the outcome of in map. Similarly, the second exercise is on urban EUP. I am looking at the changes between 2001 and 2011. Um, again, you can go to UP, choose UP state at the censusgis.org website and open 2001 and 2011 maps simultaneously. In the query box, you choose a category as child sex ratio and indicate as urban child sex ratio and choose the data range less than 920 and one sees the map which I am seeing it. So, in this exercise, we are looking at Uttarakhand at sub-district level between 2001 and 2011. So, choose Uttarakhand state in the censusgis.org website. Then simultaneously open 2001 and 2011 maps and choose sub-district and indicate a child sex ratio. Then the data range less than 920. Finally, the fourth exercise is looking at Mahubub Nagar. This is a district of uh, Andhra Pradesh which is presently uh, undivided Andhra is Telangana and Andhra. And so when you choose Mahubub Nagar, you choose the simultaneous display of 2001 and 2011 census map. Then choose the query box category as child sex ratio and data range of less than 925. We have mapped child sex ratios at different levels today, at all India level, at state level, at district level and even at the sub-district level. And we have looked at the trends over 2001 and 2011 census. So, let us keep in mind that there has been a long history of discrimination against women in our subcontinent maybe 1000 years or older. And ever since the census of India has been done, since the 1870s, we have known that, that there are less women in the subcontinent and, and sadly there are less girls. But fortunately, over the last 100 years, 120 years, we have seen sex ratios of women, sex ratios of the population, that is of the entire population are improving because women are living longer, women are dying less of childbirth. But tragically, in the 0 to 6 years, 
we are seeing, particularly before birth, over the last 40 years, we are seeing very sharp declines in the sex ratio of children under the age of 7 years. Largely because more and more girls are eliminated before birth. That is, girls are not allowed to be born. Now, fortunately, after 2001, because of the of the increased attention of the governments and increased concern of the people in Northwest India, particularly in Punjab and Haryana, sex ratios have started improving. But if every part of the country and every district has to follow the Punjab-Haryana trend, which improvement started only after the ratios dropped below 800, or nearly low 800s, then in that case, if that is a pattern which is going to happen for the rest of the several hundred districts in the country, India would lose at least 50 million girls over the coming few decades. And it is in this context, we are talking about raising public awareness against the declining child sex ratios and against the illegal practice of sex selection by the unethical medical practitioners. So, when you look at the worst districts, for instance, that again shows you the, the drastic changes which we are seeing in the distribution of, of low child sex ratios in the country. Earlier in 2001, the worst 10 districts were in, in Northwest India, almost all of them in Punjab, Haryana. Now what we are seeing, as technology of sex selection has increased all around the country, wherever the intensification has become very bad, like Uttarakhand, uh, that is Pithoragad, which is in Uttarakhand, in the border of Nepal, and China. Pithoragad has one of the worst 10 districts, worst 10 lowest child sex ratios of the country. Similarly, we are finding a bead, which is an extremely backward area of Marathwada, which is a backward part of Maharashtra, becoming in the lowest 10 districts of the country. Not only are we seeing the, the, similarly, we are seeing worst districts appearing in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Samba were bad in 2001 and 2011 they became among the worst 10. Similarly, among the better performing states, like for instance, Kerala, over the last 100 years had very good ratios among the best in the country. Now, at the sub-district level, we are seeing declines. Like in Trichur, we are seeing de declines in Chavakad. We are seeing, seeing 930 levels at overall and even below that in the, at these urban levels. So, uh, when we look at sex ratio patterns, scholar Satish Agnotri has used the word epicenters. That is where, looking at the earthquake analogy, looking at where the, the worst areas are happening. Gulimoto, a global scholar on child sex ratios, has talked about hot spots and cold spots. Hot is where the worst areas and cold is where the best areas. The idea being that the hypothesis being that hot will, will influence the neighboring areas and the cold will influence neighboring areas. However, the recent analysis of three censuses, 81, I mean 91, 2001 and 2011 have shown that the cold areas are virtually disappearing. The cold areas don't seem to have an impact on their adjacent areas while the hot areas are increasing and it has a deleterious effect on the neighboring areas. So, 
both in terms of spread as well as intensification of discrimination against the girl child. We are really seeing very frightening consequences in 2011 and unless we take the law, we are unlikely to see improvements in, in the coming decade. It is possible. Given the trends we are seeing so far, 2021 we may not see any significant improvement in child sex ratios at, in child sex ratios. Certainly we are seeing improvements in Maharashtra. We are seeing improvements as of now in Haryana and we are seeing improvements in most parts of Rajasthan. Therefore, in 2021, we can see some of these states improve, like what we have seen Punjab Arena improve in 2001, and uh, sorry, in 2011. But when we are looking at UP and Bihar, because these two states account for one in three girls born in the country, we have seen very little improvement, in fact stagnation over many years in sex ratios at birth. And therefore, unless UP and Bihar improves, we are unlikely to see very significant changes in sex ratios at birth and child sex ratios in the coming census.